Do you find yourself regularly dipping into your savings accounts? There are ways to reduce that temptation by taking steps to at least give yourself a chance to not make an impulse purchase that you might regret in the future. Here is one of the ways to do that. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese. In today's video, we are talking about a simple method that you can do to stop yourself from impulse buying. What I'm talking about are bank accounts that do not have card access, meaning you have to actually take an extra step to be able to spend the money that's within them. By adding this tiny extra step, it allows you to seriously consider whether or not you need to make this purchase. This is important, especially in times where money is tight. I have done this many times before, especially in the instance where I didn't actually have the money in the first place to spend. It can kind of come as a lifesaver depending on your financial situation and where whether or not you have access to the funds at that time. By adding this extra step, it creates an opportunity for you to seriously consider whether or not the purchase is a necessity or something that you can actually afford at the time. I have personally done this many times before where it's actually kind of came as a sort of lifesaver where I didn't have the funds at the time to make the purchase and I definitely would have been in the red if I decided to go ahead and make that purchase. Having the extra time by adding the extra step allowed me to reconsider and then find an alternate way to make that purchase. Back when I first got my credit card, this was absolutely one of the best ways to ensure that I didn't make impulse purchases too quickly. Back when I got my first credit card, this is one of the methods I used to ensure that I didn't spend irresponsibly. And it worked really well. I found myself postponing purchases and actually allocating money. So building a good habit where I would save up a portion of my wage every week until I had the money to actually go and make the purchase. By doing this, it allowed me to transition into my current method of how I actually go about making a purchase. There are things I need, there are things I wanna buy, but I follow a very strict set of rules built up from something like this example that I'm talking about in this video, which allowed me to get my finances into a way that still allows me to buy things, but responsibly. I'm going to explain my exact setup in just a moment, but I want to put some emphasis on the fact that this will work 99% of times. There will be an every now and then scenario where an impulse purchase isn't going to hurt you or it may be a necessity. I personally collect things. I have a series of things that I spend money on that I could never justify spending the money on. But when something or an item comes up that I, I need as a part of a set or a part of a collection, I make sure that I have the, the means to do it. I make sure I have the funds to do it or I have a method to pay back the funds that I was going to use to make this purchase. But essentially in an instance where it's a one-off item that you're never going to be able to get again, realistically, it's not gonna to happen too often. I'm not including them in this example or this method because I understand that it may need to be an impulse purchase. But ultimately, if it's an item that is going to be restocked on the shelf next week, it's something that you can absolutely put a little bit more thought towards before going out and forking out hundreds of dollars of cash. With my personal setup, I have five bank accounts, which I have discussed in previous videos. Three of them are accounts where I cannot use the money within them unless I transfer the money out of those accounts into a spending account. So as a general overview, I have a big savings account, one that I'm saving up for a massive purchase at some point in the future. It's not something that I want to be taking money out of regularly. That's why it's an account that I cannot access without having to transfer out of it. I have a holiday slash fun account, which I make big fun purchases, not things that are gonna change my life, but something that may be a bit of a luscious spend. I'll, I'll use the example like that. And to build that up, I need it to be hard to access. So I use it as a, an account that isn't card accessible. Thirdly is my emergency fund. I never really wanna be transferring this and unless it's a real emergency where I need to put money towards something, it's definitely gonna be in one of these types of accounts because I don't ever wanna be tempted to spend that money. The only two accounts that I have card access to not including my credit card is my spending account, which I will spend from my credit card. And then I will pay off my credit card with my spending account and my bills account because bills have to be paid and money coming out of those bills account 
that's the money that's been allocated towards them. It's no big deal if money's coming out of them. I found that this setup works well. I could see the use of having even more accounts and splitting it up even more, but at this point in time, this is the system that I use and have used for multiple years now effectively. So with your bank, the types of accounts that you want to be looking for are accounts like term deposits, which are high interest savers and generally have a lock-in period where you can't access the money within them for a period of time. They're a good way to avoid taking out money from those bank accounts. And another good example is an offset bank account. So if you have a property and your bank allows you to have offsets, make sure that it doesn't allow you to spend money from it. Even if you only have one for a big savings account, for example, an offset account is another good example of a way for you to avoid having an easily accessible big savings account. There are a few things to make sure you check for when setting up these types of accounts. And I highly encourage that if you are in a position to do this and the criteria kind of aligns, that you definitely consider doing it. The first is that there should be no fees associated with the account. The account should be free. Your bank should allow you to have these bank accounts for free. Now, sometimes there will be some criteria which you have to follow in order for it to be free. For example, you may need to deposit $1,000 into that bank account every month or you may need to make five transactions from that account which in this instance is probably unlikely because you're not going to have card access to this account but this is where it can get tricky a bank could say to you hey we'll give you this free account which you can't have card access to but you need to have an account with us which does have card access so there can be catches and you need to make sure that you're aware of them and they need to be achievable for you. So my setup is that there's no fees associated with them. I have all my bank accounts with the same bank at the moment because it works well for me and they meet all my criteria. So I have a spending account with the same bank. So even if that was a criteria, I'd be spending from my bills account at least five times a month anyway. Generally speaking, most of these accounts will be free and not have any catches because they are essentially holding accounts for your money. The bank can use that money to do their own thing. And because you lock it in for a period of time, it's generally going to be an incentive from the bank to offer it to you for free because you're entrusting your money with them. So keep in mind that your bank should have a lot of opportunities or options in this instance for this a specific need and I would encourage you to do some research and look at what your bank offers and maybe adjust your setup to make it work better for you especially if you're trying to build up a big savings account this method is just a small and simple way to give yourself a better chance to avoid spending money if you're someone who really isn't in control of your finances or if you're someone who regularly gives into the temptation and urge to impulse buy I highly suggest you try new things in ways to get out of that habit because it is a difficult thing to do I've been there myself and I've crawled out of that hole and now it's not as big of a deal if I'm making impulse purchases because I have the discipline and knowledge about how and where my money sits and what I have access to so it's something that you will build upon this is just the beginning early stages way to kind of give yourself an opportunity to start building a better habit. The amount of work that you'd have to put into doing something like this is minimal. It shouldn't take more than a couple of hours of work. And once you start getting on this path, it's definitely going to benefit you greatly. I highly encourage you to even just look at what your banks offer and see if there would be any type of setup that would work well for you. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new, a small tip or trick to kind of put yourself in a better position over time. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you in the next one.